Ladies and gentlemen, welcome your faces back to yet another BNR Project tutorial. Today we are bringing your scene transitions a little bit of spice, a little bit of extra flair by transforming them from basic fade transitions to stinger transitions. If you haven't set up OBS Studio yet or you'd like a quick refresher on the best settings or how to use it, you can check the video linked above or in the description of this video for a quick setup guide on OBS Studio. There's a lot of different places where you can get some overlays as well as some stinger transitions usually. Some are paid, some are for free. Some examples are Stream Elements Store, the Stream Lab Store, on the Elgato Marketplace, on Nerd or Die, or on Owned. There's also a lot of resources out there for you to create your very own stinger transition on After Effects. I have created a template on After Effects that allows you to change a couple of colors and uh, the logo that's used and you'll be able to download that on the link in the description below. It'll take you to a Google Drive or a Notion page where you can download the files. On that same link, there are three pre-generated Stinger transitions with either the Twitch logo, the YouTube logo, or the Facebook gaming logo, if you want to use one of those per chance. They're there for you to use. They're free. Have fun. You don't need to have expert knowledge on video editing or anything like that to be able to use this motion graphic. And I'll be able to guide you in every step of the way in this tutorial. If you already have your own Stinger transition you'd like to use and you don't have to create your own on Premiere Pro, you can skip ahead to the timestamp that's right here on the screen and uh, we'll get right into OBS and showing you how to do it. I do plan on making this very same tutorial in the near future for DaVinci Resolve, which is a free to use editing software. So stay tuned for that and subscribe to make sure you don't miss that one. So the first thing you're going to want to do is to start up Premiere Pro and start up a new project. Here we are in a brand new project ready to go. I'm going to go ahead and create a new sequence. So you can right click under the project bin, select new item, sequence. I have some pre-made custom templates for vertical videos and for YouTube, but for the sake of this video, uh, it's under HD 1080p. You can select the highest frame rate there. That's usually what I use because I stream in 60 FPS, but if you stream in 30 FPS, then you would choose something that's closer to that. Uh, we can name it whatever we want. So in my case, I'm gonna name it Singer. Alrighty then. Then for the next step, we're going to want to go into this little icon in the bottom right of your Essential Graphics tab. If you don't have the Essential Graphics tab, you can go under the Window tab and select Essential Graphics. It should open up a little window somewhere in one of these little hidden gems of uh, Premiere Pro. But once you find it, you want to select Essential Graphics. At the bottom right, there's a little square with a plus icon that allows you to install a motion graphic template. So we're going to go ahead and find the location where we downloaded the file. Mine's right over here, Basic Stinger Mogurt. So once I open that up, it should import it in. If you can't find it, you can always look for it. You look for the word Stinger, you'll find it. Uh, we're going to go ahead and select that, drag and drop it into the timeline. Uh, we can keep the existing settings or change them doesn't really matter in my case because 59.94 frames per second is very close. And once everything is loaded in, we'll be able to edit our motion graphics. So I'm going to go ahead and zoom in on the timeline here just so that we're able to scrub through the footage. So you can see the default setting that's set, the default logo and colors that are set, you can preview what the train transition really looks like if you haven't seen it yet. So now let's change the logo that's used and the colors as well because they don't really match my aesthetic of my stream. So for the studio, we're gonna be selecting the layer of the basic stinger on the timeline. That should open up the edit tab on the uh, layer itself or on the graphic itself. So you'll have three color pickers, one for a bar, uh, another one for the inner bar. So the black one you can't really see because there's no background image, but there is a black bar there. Uh, there's a red bar and there's the background color of the where the logo is sitting on. And obviously there's a, the logo as well that you can change. So uh, you can either drag and drop your file onto this little square here where the logo currently is, or you can click on the three lines and replace from Explorer, which is what I'll be doing. Uh, I have the BNR project logo here, but you can obviously put any emote, logo, whatever your heart content, really, uh, as long as there is a transparent background. You can also put something with a background as long as you change your background color to the same color of the background of the image that you have. Uh, you can even do multiple different little stingers for changing in between specific scenes. So you can have all your emotes show up if that's something that you're into or you would like to do. There's an idea. So I'm going to go ahead and select the BNR project logo. 
We're going to go ahead and resize it over here in the bottom. I can select uh, a specific height and width. Uh, I believe 200 is more or less a good size. You can always fiddle around with the size and the height here and preview it to see what it looks like. This looks about right for me. I think I'm happy with that. So I'm going to let that at 200% with the logo there. We're going to go ahead and uh, change the colors now that are used for the background. Uh, so what you can do is you can click on the little square next to where whichever color you want to change. You can manually set it if you know the uh, RGB, your hex code, whichever code you want to use. Uh, you can obviously input it here. Uh, if you just want to pick colors out of the image, you can use the eyedropper tool, which is what I'll be doing to set the background color, for instance. I'm going to use the same kind of background that's behind the uh, logo itself. So it should look something like that. So once you're happy with the color, you can click on OK and it should update and that'll be great and dandy. Otherwise, we're going to change the uh, bar. So the bar one color is going to be the outside bar. You can't really see it because it's on black right now. But if I were to set it on white, the little white that we use in the VR project logo and click on OK, we'll be able to see that there's a white bar not only at the uh, very start of the animation, but also at the very end of the animation. And then we're going to change the bar to color. I'm going to choose a nice blue that we use on the logo itself. And voila! Now you have something that follows the color scheme of your brand. It's nice. It's perfect. It's visual. The black that you guys see in the preview isn't actually going to show up as black. It's going to show up as uh, whatever stream or whatever scene is happening underneath. And basically the scene changes uh, between scene A and scene B at this point when the graphic covers the whole screen so that whenever it swipes back again the other scene should be appearing underneath uh, you can't really see on premiere it just looks like a black video and it doesn't look like there's anything underneath but if i were to move the layer up and put some kind of image or whatever underneath you'll see that it covers basically where the logo is and it doesn't show up as you know as, as a black video it's actually transparent um which is nice It'll be, you'll be able to, to export this and it'll be a transparent background if we export it with the correct settings, which is where we are at now. So now we can preview what it looks like if we go back to the beginning and we play it, we're gonna be able to see the whole transition. There's also a little sound effect that happens in the middle, which is nice. You don't need to add anything yourself if you don't want to. You can also not use that one if you don't want to. There's a way to disable the sound. If that, uh, if you can, you can mute it here, or you can mute it before you export, or you can mute it whatever, whenever you import it to uh, your streaming platform. So that always works as well. So now that we have our singer transition built and ready to go, we're gonna go ahead and export it. To do so, we can go on the export tab. So I already have some presets, and obviously I have the preset as well for all my transparent motion graphics that I use usually on stream, whether it be for stringer transitions or for uh, graphics that I make myself. But for the sake of this video, obviously I'll show you guys how to do it. So under format, you would want to select QuickTime, which is somewhere around here. And then uh, under video, make sure that the video codec is set to Apple ProRes 4444. And then the rest, you can leave it to match the source or to match the scene settings. Everything else should be fine. Uh, here's the setting in case you wanted to include or not the audio of the uh, of the of the of the singer transition. So you're able to select it on or off. I'll keep mine on because I want it to play. Uh, then we're able to change where we want it to render. So you can obviously click on the little link, choose whichever folder you want to save to. I'll save it right here and I'll name it Basic BNR Project Singer. All right. And then all you have to do is click on export on the bottom right hand corner. And that should take, for me, a couple of seconds. For you, it might take longer. It all depends on the strength of your computer, but it shouldn't take too long since it's a uh, a very short file it's barely even two it's not even two seconds so it shouldn't take too long to render out and as soon as you have it render you should be able to see it uh, wherever you download it or wherever you rendered it so mine would be right here now let's hop on obs studio and import our newly exported stinger transition all right so here we are on my seconds instance of obs which is on my laptop 
Uh, to be able to use our Stinger transition that we just exported, we're going to have to use the Scene Transition Dock. If you don't have access to this, you can go ahead and go under the Docks tab and enable Scene Transitions. If you don't have your docks locked, then you're able to move it around and place it whatever you so fancy. For me, over here, it sounds just fine, so I'll keep it there. But basically to use it, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and click on the little plus icon, which is allows us to add a new transition. It is a stinger type. So we're going to select stinger on the type section and then we can call it whatever we want. In my case, I'll just call it BNR stinger just to make sure that uh, I know what it is. We're going to go ahead and click on browse and browse through our files wherever we rendered or exported our stinger transition. In my case, it's going to be in the downloads folder and it's called basic BNR stinger. So I'm going to select that and click on open. For the transition point, I know for a fact that my stinger that we created was two seconds long, which is 2,000 milliseconds. So I know to set this transition point at the very middle, which is at a thousand milliseconds being one second at the very middle of the transition. So we're going to set that to a thousand. If you have your own stinger transition that you gotten online from whatever source I've named them in earlier, or you got your own from somewhere else, then uh, you can obviously uh, set whatever time transition point time that they provide in the documentation, if any, or you can also just play around with it. What you're looking for is to be able to, when you scroll down, you can preview the transition, what it looks like. So what we're looking for is the moment between when the screen is fully covered between when it says scene A and scene B. Basically the hot spot is like the moment in between, right? When everything is covered, you want the transition point to be at that specific time because that's when uh, you want to switch scenes between the two. So yeah, you can play around with it and uh, and see what suits you best. Like if I were to change it to 1,500, we'll see that it changes a bit late. It has time to pass by before the scene actually twitches. The same way if I put it too early, we'll see that it goes from A to B before the screen is fully covered. For whoever uses the free template or one of the three stinger transitions that I provide, the hotspot is usually a thousand milliseconds. So you'll see that it covers the whole screen. It switches, you don't even see it switching because the moment it passes by again, it's already on scene B. Now for the audio, uh, you would want to go under audio monitoring. If it if it's set to monitoring off, you won't be able to hear it, but stream will most probably be able to hear it. You can also set it to monitor only if you have your monitoring settings uh, not set correctly, then you'll be able to hear it. And then stream will also be able to hear it. Sometimes if you set it to monitor and output, it'll play double. So you'll be able to hear it. Stream will be able to hear it twice because it plays through your speakers and through OBS. It's a bit confusing. It's hard to tell when you're just looking at it like this. Usually it's easier if you make a little short recording and and record the actual transition listen back to it and make sure that the audio is correct in my case uh, setting it to monitor and output will work because i have my monitoring settings different than what my speaker settings are and then i highly suggest you change the audio fade style to crossfade this will make it so for instance so that if your microphone is used in both scenes that you're switching to and from it won't lower the volume completely of your microphone and then boost it up again it'll be basically crossfade in between both. And if the volume is set to the same in between both, you'll hear no difference at all. It's more noticeable for sources, for instance, if I have my microphone on my just chatting scene and then I switch to my BRB scene and there's no microphone there, then my source will slowly, gradually reduce to zero and then the audio from wherever I go to is going to start playing. Once you have all those settings done, you should be able to click OK and uh, you should be ready to go to use your new Stinger transition. So now if we were going to test it out and switch to another scene, for instance, one of my gaming scenes, so from the just chatting scene to the gaming scene, we'll see the lovely transition and then back again. And that's about all you need to know about Stinger transitions. I hope this video helped you out. If it did, leave a like rating, comment if you have any questions. If you don't know me already, hello, hi.
My name is Coco. I'm one of two content creators here on the BNR project. I usually stream on Twitch as well every Sunday and Tuesday. So definitely go ahead and check us out there if you so fancy it. Make sure to check the playlist linked above for more tips and tricks on how to elevate your game on OBS Studio. Subscribe for more tutorials like this one, gaming videos or vlogs from the BNR project and I'll catch you next time.